Hey guys, welcome to one of my favorite places in the world. You'll find out in a minute where I'm at, but this episode is another episode, blah, 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 Rented Lives called Easy Come, Easy Go. Now, I don't have Chick Flick Teal Pointer. Let's see if somebody here has something I can use. Look at this. It's got a mirror. I can see myself. That's always a bonus, but right up there, right about now, is an episode about what's in this case. Now, a little background about what's in this case. I had another guitar that was in an episode up there. So that's two of them. But I've been basically trading guitars that I got for reasonable prices. And sometimes you're able to trade up by doing a little bit of work I'm not out to fool anybody or rip anybody off or anything like that. But the bottom line is, I was able to get one guitar, trade it and trade it and trade it. We ended up getting, again, there's an episode up there, the Gretsch Electromatic that you see here. Now, it had a broken tailpiece. It had a few other little things, but it was a fine instrument. It was playable. I put a little time into it and again. Click up there and you will see what I did to this guitar. But when I got it done, it's always been in the back of my mind. I would love to have a Gibson arch top from like 1938 to 42. And also a national steel body. Do doesn't matter what these things are. I don't need $5,000 instruments or anything like that. I just want something that I can work on a little bit, make it mine, and put it away and say, I have those guitars. That's been my goal. So, I got this one done. It turned out really nice. It had a broken tailpiece, because that's what most of them do. But, Dynasonic pickup, 1954 model. Everything was here, knobs and everything. So, I got it done. I gave a call and let somebody know. There's somebody out there that wants this, but I am after what I want to get after. And I couldn't believe it. Went up and saw one of my friends. And I'm going to show you something really amazing. Now, before I open this case, I'm going to tell you some things that I've told you before. If you would just listen... But F-holes on archtop guitars were never a thing until Lloyd Lore came along to Gibson in 1921 and then started doing production models in 1922, and he was gone shortly thereafter. But the first F-hole guitars you will see uh, produced by an American company was the Gibson. Now, before that, there were archtop guitars, but they had round holes and oval holes. And so the guitars pre-1922, the arch tops that were coming out of Gibson in different size models had arch tops. They were hand carved, spruce top, mahogany sides and bottom and neck. But you didn't see F holes. Now, Ken Parker will tell you, I'll give you an episode up here, that the F hole was probably the worst thing that ever happened acoustically to arch top guitars. Anyway, you're, you're going to want to see that one. But the person that I traded this guitar for knew he wants an arch top, a Gibson arch top. Now, Cromwell, uh, Recording King, some of the people that were making, uh, selling Gibson guitars under their brand names to their catalog, like Wards and whatever. Didn't matter to me. I would have taken any of those. But a guitar came out. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And it's in this case. It is an arch top. You see that? See the bottom? But guess what? There are no F holes. That means this guitar is a Gibson. It's a 19... 18 Gibson. Now, the neck is cracked right here. It's got some body cracks. 
it's got a few little things here that we'll get into a little bit deeper here in a minute but I want you to listen to a little bit about this guitar from the person that I got it from. Take it away, Fred. So I'm here with my friend Ken, and uh, he is, I, God, I just, I really took him down the river on a train. Yeah, just kidding. Uh, I wanted Ken to have this guitar because I found it in my possession for since I was 20. I'm 76, so that was 56 years ago I got it. And I got it from an interesting guy. This is right in the, you know, the, 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 the beginning of the, you know, the real hippie period. And, you know, it would have probably been around. Let's see. I would have been would have been 67. And uh, I got him from a guy, really interesting, a guy by the name of Paul George. He had a company that made St. George guitars. Real cheap guitars. But the guy really knew what he was doing. And uh, he had some beautiful guitars. And I bought a lot of them. This was one of them. Uh, he had gotten his uh, deep water sailboat ready to navigate the world. He had a bunch of money and he said he was never coming back to the US. And uh, so anyway, I got this guitar from him. Uh, again, did we, we look this up, right, and it was... 1918. 1918. I've had it forever. And I was going to uh, fix this up in all my spare time. But the only thing I think I had time to do on this... I don't think I, I think, I don't think I had any time to do anything on it. Anyway, that's all I know. Thanks a lot, folks. Okay, guys, I'm back in my shed. I'm going to throw this thing on the workstation and kind of give you a closer look at it. I don't know that um, we're going to be able to get all the right angles with the camera setting up the way it is. I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about where that body is split right there where the neck has taken a hit. So let's throw this on the bench and see what we can do with camera angles. We're looking at it down the guitar, down the neck. And before I put the camera up there, looking down upon it, I want to kind of show you what's really happening here. You can see that right here, the neck is split. It's not broken away from the body, but it is split from here to here. Now, it is not split like a grain split where sometimes you'll see, and I've had a resonator do this from uh, Gretsch, where they'll split right here where it'll follow the grain when they cut an L-shaped block of wood. But this split kind of runs at a bit of an angle. And it runs all the way over to here, this crack, and all the way over to here. Now, when you feel this over here and over here, there's something markedly different. And the width of the split here is different in both places. So if I feel here there's a little lip, but there's no lip here. Let me put teeter-totter in this back and forth. But just remember, this split here starts and runs up a little bit higher here, goes down a little bit on the other side and extends into the body here and then over here, quite a ways over here. The takeaway on this is this side seems to be 
compressing while this side seems to be expanding. Okay, we are over the top of the guitar now and I am going to try and whip this around and, and you see that it says the Gibson. There is a very small piece of the logo they're missing on the down curve of the S, but other than that it's good. Um, the head is headstock's just a little beat up here and there, but the tuner holes are are there. Um, they are the original tuners are there. It's got this interesting stripe going down the back, um, but all in all, the headstock is good. Um, the nut is missing. Um, the binding is still pretty much intact on the headstock. Some of it is still left on the fingerboard. It looks like there's a loud car going by with a tire that's not right, but what's new? Um, the other side, fret markers are there. There may have been some repair done to this here and there. The fretboard is actually pretty good. The, the uh, bottom of it, where you might expect there to be some problems where it comes together like this, is good. There's a little bit of difference in the color here and here on the binding on the side. So let, let me get this. Um, settled in and clamped into the workstation. I don't want this thing falling apart. Now, when we look at the top or falling off, when we look at the top, the inlay is all here. All these pieces are here. Everything feels pretty good, nice and smooth. There's a little bit of grit and grime here. The binding is here. You can see where it was put together at the point there. Let me unwrap this thing again. You're going to want to see this stuff. But you can see right there, there is the line where the binding came together. Again, there's a lot of grit in here, but the um, label is there. Let me see if I can and show you. Maybe, yeah, there we go. You can get a little bit better look at that, at that split right there on the neck. Do you see it? You see how it runs more diagonally this way towards the bottom side of the guitar if you're playing right-handed and then the left side is here like so. And this is a side that feels like it's being compressed while this side is being spread. I know this is a nightmare, but anyway, go with it. On the top, there is one little hairline right here. Um, the rest of the sides are okay. There is a crack starting right here, and it seems to be rolling this side down, this side up a little bit. Um, binding is good everywhere except here. There's a little chip missing out of there. I should be able to take care of that. Um, but the bracing is good. Everything is good. I think what happened is this guitar took a hit where it fell or it was sitting on a stand or something and it fell and hit something and, and popped that uh, crack in it. That crack's been there for a really long time. Um, let's take a quick look here. Um, these parts were actually in a bag in the sound hole. And I don't know whether they'd been collected or what, but... Um, here are the original tuners, if you can believe that. Now, um, what I've been told is on old guitars, the tuners actually turned backwards uh, from the way we know them to turn now. And um, I think part of that was if you put the strings on and you pull them one way, you're actually pulling into the gear. You see that here? If we were to string this and the string tension was facing this way, you would be pulling the gear into the tuner peg. Um, the other way, you'd actually be pulling it away, and that would cause some wear there. It would probably cause the tuner um, peg to wear out. That's just supposition. Um, but there are the tuners. Now, the cool thing is... The original tail piece is here, but these tail pieces had a 
celluloid binding, which is kind of like that material you see, see the radio knobs are made out of just kind of this weird plasticky looking thing. But anyway, it was curved, it had a radius to it, and it had holes in it and slots. And there were actually bridge pins that were holding the strings in, but that thing eroded a while ago. But these um, are threaded at the end. And I don't know, I may try to make a piece out of rosewood that kind of mimics this. Or, of course, Cluson makes um, bridges or, or um, um, trapeze tail pieces that will fit this. And then I've got a relatively old bridge that I can use. Um, this is not the original bridge. The original bridge had a, a center pillar, two side pillars. It was more like a violin bridge, but it, it did not have um, thumb wheels or an adjustment this way. I guess you would just um, sand or, or, or uh, sand the thing down, plane it down, add something at the bottom or whatever. But that's the original parts I had. So while we're here, what I think is happening is this guitar has twisted over the years, so one side of the crack up at the neck is opening a little bit, the other side is closing a little bit, the body's twisting a little bit, and I think these cracks are, are an adjustment to what's going on with the neck. Now, I don't want to get into too much detail here, but I will tell you what, when I go to fix this thing, I do not want to be just clamping, I think you can see it right there, yeah. That's probably a pretty good angle. You can see that the split right here is several millimeters wide, um, not so much over here, you see that? And again, it's running at an angle here. This side is coming down or together, where this side is opening up a little bit where the crack is wider. It actually, the crack has followed the body. I don't know that I want to glue everything right to this because I think everything is attached here. Um, I'll get into that when I fix it. But let's say I were to clamp onto this right now and pull this together after I steam the gunk out of it or whatever's in there. If I try to close this, there's going to be a price to pay. And I think that price is... Wherever the guitar is compressing now, it's going to compress worse and it's going to crack worse. And I think there's a linear um, diagonal relationship on the loading that would happen there that will end up cracking here and then going over to the other side of the body where the same thing is happening on the back. So anyway, that's this guitar. I'm going to go back to where I was uh, through a time machine or something like that and close this episode out. But watch for me to be working on this one and don't expect me to junk pile this one out. So easy come, easy go. I couldn't be happier. Somebody is going to end up with that Gretsch playing it's a fully functional instrument. Some people don't like these, but I will tell you this. When the F-hole guitars came out, these kind of fell out of favor because everybody wanted the F-hole guitar. Now, you've seen a picture of Robert Johnson, the only one that exists, showing him holding a guitar like this. And I would venture to guess that the F-hole guitars put these out of favor. Then you ended up having these instruments uh, that people didn't desire so much anymore become available finally to the people that make the kind of music I like to listen to, the, the people who are making um, records in the late 20s and early 30s. And if there's somebody that, uh, I got a whole list of people that I would love to have here play this guitar because they can play that kind of music. Top of the list is Nat Myers. I would love to hear what Luther Dickinson could do with this one, Cody Harrell. Uh, even Reverend Peyton. There's going to be no pickups on this or whatever, and I am going to show you in a future episode uh, how I fix this thing up, and we've already presented the structural issues here, so I'll not try not to repeat that too heavily, but um, here's what's going up the food chain. I think this road has ended. I can start working on the other one, which is a, 
a beat up old rusty national and um i'll have my back room collection so hey thanks for watching always great to have fred with us you can't beat fred as a human being or a luthier and the weather up here is awesome guitars love it so give me a like and a subscribe if you can't like this i don't know what you can like just be happy people be happy if you can't be happy for you be happy for me